Hi, welcome back to Elite Life Mastery Secrets. I'm Natalie Rose, and I'm thrilled to have you all back with us today for another phenomenal opportunity to unleash our intuition and reclaim our power here on Elite Life Mastery Secrets. Today, we have a beautiful woman, Michelle Alva, who is the creator of the Alva Method of Vibrational Healing and Rapid Mindset Change. And she's on a mission to uplift our world and remind us of our essential nature, nature that we are love. And she does this by integrating her over 20 year background as a physical therapist, yoga therapist, energy medicine practitioner, belly dance teacher, psych K facilitator, and sound healer. Just an incredible array of experiences there that really excite me. Uh, Michelle creates a sacred space where clients learn how to easily and effectively release and process old repressed physical and emotional stress held in the body and create an optimal environment for self-healing to feel lighter, connected, fully alive, and aligned with their true authentic essence. This experience creates major healing with minor effort so they feel calm, balanced, and clear. Welcome, Michelle. Glad you could be here with us. Thank you so much, Natalie. I'm so happy to be here today, and I'm excited about what we're going to talk about. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into this amazing Elite Mastery Summit, you're calling it, right? Elite Life Mastery Secrets. Yes, we are sharing Secret. our secrets. Yeah. Yeah. So happy to be a part of it. Thank you. So you have an amazing background of all kinds of healing modalities. Um, how did you come to be doing what it is that you're doing now with the Alva Method? Well, it's really been all a reflection of my own healing journey, as I think that usually is what happens to healers, right? Yeah. Um, I'm a seeker of truth, and I strive always to deep. I'm a very deep person, and I'm a cancer woman, and um, I just I'm on this quest to discover and rediscover our essence, who we really are, and it's a curiosity that I've had to, as a seeker, I mean, it's something inside of me that moves me to not, it's not enough for me to just be living my life passively. I, I really wish to be an active, engaged, fully alive being, like fully authentically expressed, fully expressed. And I think that desire for more, um, and a lot of it came from worthlessness, not feeling good enough really seeking more ways of healing, another certification, and wanting to give my best as a physical therapist, not realizing that ultimately everything that I was learning was really for my own growth until, I mean, I think that's ultimately why we're doing this, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I love that we are whole, energetic, vibrational, emotional, physical beings and I never felt my background as a physical therapist was enough. So I kept looking for different modalities to help me understand myself, but also to be serving my clients to the fullest capacity. So what I hear is that this was not just a smooth sailing path full of uh, roses and kittens along the way. There were some challenges that you had to overcome and negotiate. Oh, definitely. Yes. I mean, a lot of it, I would say most of my life I lived disconnected. And I tell people that I have an expert background in knowing what the opposite of healing is to know now what healing is. So that contrast is, I've had a lot of training in the contrast. Nice. <laughs> also. Yeah. What do you feel like was really the key, right? We're talking about our, our secrets to mastering life. Is there one thing in particular that you feel like was essential to you coming to this place? Yes, I feel it was very significant when I had this realization that life is happening for me to grow and heal and love more. And that our creator, the universe, God, however you want to believe about it, whatever created the trees, the ocean, us, is on our side, is very loving to us, and is bringing all these traumas, suffering, challenges, that we think they are challenges, to really grow us and connect us more. 
And I look at dis-ease, our physical body, as a communicator that lets us know how we're off balance. So our body's telling us simply to get back in balance. And I perceive my bodily sensations as simply text messages trying to tell me, Michelle, you know, don't carry all the burden on your own shoulders. Take a break, go meditate, love yourself more, pamper yourself more. You don't have to hold on to all that tension in your body. Um, so I look at now, I think that's a really important key to realize that we're so loved by this creator of ours and that everything that's happening is happening for us to grow and be more connected to what we really are. Is there any particular way that you do that or that you share for other people to do that? Yeah, for me, the diaphragmatic breathing is one of the most powerful exercises using the diaphragm through its full range of motion. And with the body in extension, we sit in a computer and we slouch, and that doesn't allow our diaphragm to work. So when you put your body in an open extended posture, which I'll show you, I'm gonna get up a little here. You actually open up the possibility for more oxygen to come into your body. So when we slouch and we sit on the computer like this, our diaphragm is stuck. It can't move down as it's supposed to. So when we bring our shoulders down and back and we open up the, the chest cavity, the rib cage, then we can expand our belly, expand our chest. And doing that brings more energy, more oxygen into the body immediately. But it also stretches the fascial system that covers all the muscles. And when we have trauma, stress, our heart contracts. It gets tight. If we have a negative thought, we tense our heart and that pulls on all of our fascial system, the sheath that covers the body, the muscles, the organs. So this exercise that I've created, I call it the E3 breath and it's E3 for extension, expansion and elongation that teaches people how to release themselves from the inside out. And it's very empowering because it also forces you, it's a form of mindfulness meditation that makes you focus inside deeply. And that's where we tend to not want to focus. So I think this exercise is one of the most powerful uh, ways of quickly and easily getting in touch deeply with ourselves and our soul and our heart and our gut feeling, and I do this all the time, all throughout my day actually, and I teach my clients to do this, so I call it functional spirituality. We're doing activities in our physical body that connect us to our heart and our soul, and also keep us feeling light and clear. You get more bang for your buck with this exercise. It does a lot of things. I love that, I love that. So the idea, I, I can totally relate to that feeling, to that idea of, contraction limits us and it uh, changes what we can, what's actually possible for us to think about as opposed to that expansive uh, place. I had an experience of this just the other day when I had this sort of negative thought pattern in my head that kept cycling through and cycling through. And I'm like, how can I get rid of this? How can I get rid of this? You know, what am I grateful for? What else can I think about? You know, and that whole, uh, Thing. And then I thought, wait, I'm, I'm looking down, I'm feeling contracted, let me put my shoulders back and, and open up my chest and all of that. All I had to do, I mean, that helps, absolutely. All I had to do was lift my chin. I was looking down ahead of me. I wasn't even all squinched up. I was just looking down like at a point several feet in front of me on the floor. And just by lifting my head and changing my focus up, it turned off, it immediately turned off the negative thoughts and sort of opened up my mind to have space for something else. And it was just a, a fascinating thing that it was so, something so simple. So when we talk about the idea of your exercise of opening on a much deeper level and releasing that contraction on a much deeper level, the effects have got to be just incredibly profound. Yes, I, I, I feel that it does, it's a very deep and 
quick and easy method that out of all the things I've learned in 20 years of working, I actually had this as a download. It came to me. I use my intuition basically all day. And my guides, my intuition guided me to create this major healing with minor effort effect where also I notice when my clients are causing their own inner release that automatically makes them feel empowered and it takes their power back to them so that they're not codependent on me as a healer or therapist. They're actually strengthening their inner physiology to heal themselves through the healing sessions so that when they go home and they're not with me, they can still be their own best advocate for themselves, best friend, best cheerleader, healer. And I really feel that's what's been missing in our healthcare system because we depend so much in the past in this traditional medical model of the physician, the doctor, the expert of you, when really inside of you is your intuition, is your inner physician. And that's what the work that I do is all about teaching people how through their physical body to access that realm of wisdom and knowing that we all have. We just have to know how to turn it on basically. I love that. And it is so in alignment with what we're talking about here. And it brings me to a question. I want to come back to the process and I'd love for you to show it to us if, if that works in this format. But the question is, you said, this came as a download. You realized it was your intuition speaking to you about creating this process. Yes. Is it possible for you to articulate for us what that experience is of yes. getting uh, that message and knowing it's, it's right? Yeah. Well, when I was working with my clients, see, for me, it all reflects back to my personal life, though, because for the longest time, I felt stuck in my life. Really, only in the past five years of my life have I really had major awakenings, major clearings of the weight of the past. So I lived 37 years of my life mostly in my head, disconnected from my intuition, from my gut feeling, and more living on the programs of what I was supposed to be doing, being raised Latina, Catholic. Um, so it was the subconscious programs, which we learn from birth to seven years old, this is where the mindset change work comes in, is basically what we're all living. And, and a lot of us are living unconsciously. We're not even aware of why we do things. So unconsciously, I, I was literally seeking a way out of my woundedness. Um, when I was young, my parents divorced and my father left and I, and I didn't visit my father. My father didn't stay in touch with me and I felt abandoned. So I was in a lot of pain, but I never cried or complained about it. I was 12 years old and my mom wasn't really asking me, are you okay that your dad and I divorced? Do you need a hug? Do you miss your dad? So we just never talked about it. And I, it turns out that I had a lot of sadness that I lost my prince. He was my everything. And so I learned that it was really hard for me to connect emotionally, intimately, vulnerably with my ex-husband because I never had that I had those wounds that were keeping me from opening up my heart to someone else for fear of abandonment. So I had I'm abandonment issues, if anybody's ever heard of that. Um, have, you know, I'm recovering from that. And that made me go to therapy. So I went to psychotherapy, especially after my divorce, at the end of my marriage. There was, I was just very naggy, not happy. I had this great job, you know, physical therapist, teaching infant massage, working with pregnant women and children, and sort of touching here and there the spiritual things, but at the same time scared of that. Um, so my life basically crumbled when I was 37 years old to rebuild. Um, so that made me go to therapy. And then I would go to therapy. I'd have traditional psychotherapy. But there was something inside me saying it's not enough. And it turned out from my own yoga, breathing, sensual nature that I am, that I discovered that I was holding shame in my body, in different parts of my body, 
And because of yoga and the breathing and belly dancing, belly dancing was moving my pelvis and my genitals and shaking my body and moving emotions that I don't think I ever knew I was holding that had nothing to do with my ex-husband. It was all about my dad. And I, I experienced sexual trauma when I was 14. That was also a major shame filling up in my body experience that made me disconnect from my body. So the therapy that I was going to, I didn't feel it was enough. It was all mental, but my body really needed reconnection to my soul and, and myself. And I was holding so many emotions of judgment, guilt, shame, uh, calling myself names inside because I didn't scream or yell or run out when that teenager had his way with me. And I judged myself and I, I, um, I didn't even know that I was holding on to all this anger towards myself. And that made me seek embodiment healing. That made me seek what other ways can I heal where I'm actually doing something with my physical body and my energetic emotional body because I didn't feel the talk therapy was enough. So that's what made me look for different ways to, to heal. And so what is it coming back to um, the idea of experiencing intuition? So I hear you, even from the contracted and, and disconnected place you were in, you did get a message, you heard that message, something you know needs to heal deeper mm -hmm. on that level. So that sounds like sort of an early experience of listening to your intuition. Yeah, well, usually at night, my intuition would come in. And basically, our intuition is there when we meditate. When you breathe with your diaphragm, you're accessing your intuition. Anytime you're not thinking, when you're being, when you're clearing your mind, that's why a lot of us have a hard time connecting to our intuition, because we don't meditate. We don't spend time with our intuition part of us. You can't have a hearing of some download if you're too busy thinking and analyzing and criticizing or judging or trying to figure something out in your mind. And what I've learned is if I simply use the breathing and feel myself throughout the day, that causes me to align my body, mind, and soul. And therefore, I'm emitting a frequency of alignment. And that frequency of alignment to my soul, my heart, causes me to send out that vibration. And we get what we are, we don't get what we want. So vibrationally, everything that is aligned with my heart and soul, my purpose, is gonna come to me much easier. So this is the core of the work that I do, is really about embodying alignment, connection with your authentic self, your true self, with your diaphragm through its full range of motion, with your body expanding, and feeling fulfilled because that's what we are. That's our nature to be that. And when you live from that place, miracles happen. People call you that, like for, for the summit, people reach out to you. People ask you to do things that you love because you're simply getting back what you're putting out. And this is what I've come to realize more than ever. A part of it is saying, what do I want to create? What do I love? And, and then that's a part of connecting to our soul, right? What brings us passion. And then being open to receiving. And, and the physical exercise of that expansiveness embodies that feeling of receptivity. Because I think a lot of us have a hard time receiving. Especially women, we love to give, 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 like me. And so I've had to learn how to receive. And why not do it through a physical breathing exercise that I do every day? So it's really smart to actually practice in your body what you would like to believe or think because your body is your subconscious mind. So a lot of this work is about feeling safe, feeling supported, knowing that we're not alone, knowing that there's a creator that is kind and loving, and that everything that we are is what we're attracting. So we can look at our life as a reflection of us and then that can give us indicators as to what we want to shift in our life. Instead of blaming something happening to you, we can take responsibility that we're creating it. Because we really are creating a lot more than what we, I think, are aware of. Yeah. I mean, imagine if everybody laid down in the morning 
in an open posture and visualized peace on earth, everybody. Mm. Yeah. And instead of just visualizing it, they embodied it in every cell of their body. Imagine what that would do to our world. Yeah. We should try to schedule that. <laughs> yeah, I would love to. <laughs> um, so I love that you talk about the idea of receptivity and that we can actually improve our ability to receive, whether it's energetic, whether it's intuitive messages, whether it's love from other people, love and support, um, that there's actually a physical way to improve that process, I think is so powerful. Yes. Um, and I love, because as you said, that receiving peace is so important, especially for women. You know, I, I talk about it as um, you can't continue to breathe out and breathe out and breathe out. You've got to breathe in as well. And that- um. That's, receiving is crucial to being able to give, right? We have and even ourselves. just putting your body in that posture of openness, opening up your thighs, opening up your hips. We hold stress in our genitals, in our inner thighs, in our neck, in our shoulders. So when you arch your back, I have a video on YouTube. If people go actually to my website, michellealva.com, there's a blog post about fulfillment breathing. So if you just Google Michelle Alva, Fulfillment Breathing, there's an article that I wrote and it has the video and audio meditation you can download there um, and that explains it. So you can listen to it and you can watch it. And this is literally what I do to rinse. It's like a towel, rinsing and flushing the stress in my body, in my jaw, in my neck, in my shoulders, in my center of all this center part of my body that if when we're running away and we're, we're flight or fight response, the blood doesn't go to the center of the body, right? It goes to the arms and legs. So in this posture, because I know the science of this, uh, I've created it so that it's bringing more blood flow to the center of your body. Mm, beautiful. And that helps us to relax. Is the that, vagus. Awesome. Can, is that something you can demonstrate for us here or is it better for us to check out the video yeah i would go to michellealva.com okay. and if there you'll is send us if you'll send us a link we could put it on your page that people oh i will click. okay but, i will uh, definitely do that for sure we yes will make it super and i mean i can i'm i'm wearing a dress yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you can imagine these are my feet and i put my feet together and i separate my my knees so that my pelvic floor is open my inner thighs are open, and then I lay down and I arch back on pillows. You'll see that, and it really feels good, actually. Yes, it's a way of yeah. pleasuring yourself by letting those muscles that get stressed out take a break. So your body says, thank you. Oh, my God, you're so kind to me. The body loves to feel completely supported. So if you have back pain, if you have shoulder tension, if you have irritable bowel syndrome, if you have any type of hip tension, circulation problems, it's literally uh, like Windex um, for the soul. That movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, you know how they use Windex for everything? I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah. Um, but it's so funny. That's how I think of the diaphragmatic. This E3 breathing technique from the Alva Method is it really does help so many things because that's how brilliant we are healing doesn't have to be difficult and that's where i emphasize major healing with minor effort and i even work through the phone i work with people on the phone and it doesn't take much for them to release and create significant shifts in their physiology because we're tapping into the science of healing in this healing work and for example in yoga you could go to a yoga conference, take a yoga class, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be 100% beneficial to you. Some of it might actually hurt you. And I am a yoga teacher. I'm yoga trained. And in my own teacher training, I was asking the teacher, you know, why are we doing this? It makes no sense. There were things that they were actually teaching us that would cause sciatica. So most of the people there weren't physical therapists. There was no physical therapists. But because of my science background, Everything I do is intentional and I'm only taking the things that are really going to make a difference because that's my intention is to bring a healing modality that is very effective and very practical. And I call it practical, functional spirituality. 
because that's how we learn. We learn when we use things that are applied in our daily life. And, and to me, life is the yoga mat. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I love that, that there is a way to connect to our soul, our spirit, our spirituality uh, from a physical perspective. I get, right, that's sort of the idea behind yoga. You work with the body so that you can quiet the mind. Or and the full range of motion breathing gets you connected fully to your soul. For example, if you, like an air mattress, if you've ever inflated an air mattress, you know how the air mattress, when you fill it up to the max with air, it's very, it's very voluptuous. It's very, it's like, <laughs> you know, totally full, right, of air. So when you do the diaphragmatic E3 breath, you're doing the... You're pumping yourself up with prana, with oxygen, to the max. So more of your soul, more of your essence, your prana, your energy, your chi, is going to be in you. And if you're spending time slouching, sitting for six to eight hours a day, you're not going to have as much prana energy flowing through you. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. You're going to be like a little wilted air mattress that has a little <laughs> draining out all that energy and your body loves to be voluptuous and full yeah. because that's our nature to be abundance. It yes. really is our nature to be abundant, just like everything in nature. There's so many leaves. There's so many, you know, little sand pebbles and it's, it's abundance is everywhere in nature and we are nature. And so when we're not taking in a full deep breath, we're not really getting that pleasure of being, our essence. I love that. I love that. And it's perfect segue. Speaking of abundance, you have a very special offer coming from a place of abundance for the people who are listening. Can you tell us a little bit about what you are gifting everyone? Yes. Um, well, first of all, if anybody's interested in a free 15 minute phone consultation to see if the Alva method, this healing work is something that they would be benefiting from, which I kind of feel everybody can benefit from it. But I want to just give that as a gift um, for people to reach out and send me an email if they're interested in that. And then also I've created a forgiveness meditation that teaches you how to embody forgiveness in every cell of your body. Because a lot of times my clients come and they'll say, oh, I already forgave my ex-husband. And I'll ask them something about that relationship and they'll go like this, their body will tense up. So they're saying that they've forgiven, but their body is saying, heck no, I haven't forgiven. I'm not opening my heart again. So this is where that guided meditation, it's only 10 minutes. Um, it literally will cause your body to have a release in your heart and to also reflect on what needs to be forgiven inside of you. Because that's something I've noticed for sure that People that are angry at somebody else, we think we're angry at someone else, but underlying all that sadness and anger, what I've noticed over the past 20 years of working in this work, that basically somewhere we are angry at ourselves for allowing ourselves to be hurt. And, and somehow we have lost trust with ourselves. So forgiveness is not just about letting go of hurt from someone, but hurt from ourself, and then regaining trust with ourself. And that, it needs to be completed. So that meditation, I'm really, I think it's one of the most powerful forgiveness meditations I've ever heard. And that's why I wanted to gift that to everyone. And I'm sure everybody can benefit from forgiveness, embodying forgiveness. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I love that you bring up that piece where, um, tying back to your speaking about the psychotherapy, the idea, I've had that experience as well, where talk therapy and going, okay, in my head, I'm clear, in my head, I'm clear. But also getting that sense of, I realize that I'm holding something in my body. I need to address what's being held in my body, what's limiting there. I could talk till I'm blue in the face and it's not going to shift that for me. So um, and personally, having gotten to experience your healing session, it is profound. It is amazing what you can connect with when you allow yourself to be open and to um, allow those memories that you aren't necessarily 
connected to to come up that do allow you to make that connection right between mm -hmm. what is it that I'm holding against myself so I love that you and, and saying yes as I was asking in the questions that's part of the alpha method is when you say yes to opening yourself to that your body's been waiting for you to say yes so it literally happens at the speed of light because our body wants to heal our body wants to release this it's, your body doesn't want to carry 50 pounds of baggage from the past that has nothing to do with you that you just absorbed from your parents arguing or something that you carried on yourself and blamed yourself for, like me, feeling ashamed um, about this sexual, you know, what happened to me. As a child, as a 14-year-old, I didn't know how to cope, so I just took it on myself. And I didn't realize how that really devastated my soul connection, um, my self-esteem and my self-worth. And so I think a lot of us are walking around, especially with addictions and the people with addictions that have had a lot of trauma and they don't even know. And children, I also feel it's so important for us to hold space for our kids and go down to their eye level if they fall or if they're crying and just not try to fix them, just breathe. Breathe and flow so that your child can cry and let those feelings out instead of Shh, be quiet, go to your room, go cry in your room. So those kinds of things tense up the diaphragm and then the child learns that that's how they're supposed to cope with their emotions. And then we wonder why they have a heart attack at age 50 or why they develop you know, high blood pressure. Or So I have a lot of compassion for people in general, because some people will walk into the session and they, I'll say, well, what would you like to focus on today? If they bought a package of six sessions, for example. And I remember one client that came from out of town said, oh, I actually feel really good. And then of course my intuition right away when he said that, I had a little voice tell me something. And then we kind of, I brought up some questions that made some things come up. And he was saying how amazing it is to to work with me because I had I have this ability, this uncanny ability to, to see and feel where those blockages are. And all it took was a little tweaking for this person and he got to clear something that was keeping him from going forward that he didn't even realize was a stumbling block. Um, so I think it's really helpful to train ourselves to have more of an intuitive connection because it really does make our lives so much easier. And can you imagine having relationships where you don't even have to talk and you're just, you're feeling each other and you're sensing one another and you're sensing yourself, what's right for you, what choices are the best for you. What a beautiful way to live where you don't have to waste all this time analyzing, thinking about what the right answer is for you. You can just feel it. And it makes us feel more relaxed also because the knowledge, that wisdom that we have, we're listening to it. And I really feel now at age 43, I really feel I'm onto something about how we were designed to live lightly, easily, effortlessly, just like the palm trees that sway with the wind. The more we connect to our intuition, our intuitive strengths, the more we can flow with life and whatever life is dancing with us, telling us, and I wish this for all of us. Beautiful, beautiful. It's so juicy too. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I love um, that you're offering for people the opportunity to speak with you directly if they feel some resonance with what you've been speaking about. And yeah, if your intuition's uh, calling you to call me, go for it. And that could be a first step in honoring that intuitive voice for sure. I love that. I love that. And absolutely make sure you check out uh, the forgiveness meditation and we'll have a link there as well to watch the video for the breathing technique. So we're throwing a lot at you here, a lot of opportunities with Michelle. Um, yeah. Make sure you take her up on all of them. And if you have any questions, I know she would love to hear from you. I love to hear your response from uh, what you get from these interviews. So reach out to me as well. And want to say thank you to Michelle for being here today and sharing. Thank you so knowledge. much, Nancy. And, and thank, you, thank you to everybody for tuning into this, all these videos and, and audios and for giving ourselves these little pearls of wisdom. Life is too short. And I mean, I feel the more we live connected, I feel that's why we're here. 
the more we can really enjoy every moment to the fullest. Beautiful. I can't top that. Have a beautiful day, everyone. See you tomorrow. Thank you again, Michelle. I Thank really you. Appreciate your time. Take care.